So the complete first season of the live action One Piece is officially up on Netflix. And I've watched the first episode and I thought I'll give my thoughts on it, quick review. And then if you guys are interested, I can do um, either weekly or bi-weekly reviews on the last seven episodes. So it starts out with Gold Roger's execution. And can I just say, I'm not impressed with the delivery of his big speech in the anime. It was very grandiose. It was very flamboyant and it kind of gets you pumped. But the way the actor delivered it here in the live action was just not as inspiring. And also some of the word changes were kind of, I don't know, it, it just wasn't as good. Another thing I noticed is that they had a bunch of people in the crowd watching that I wouldn't have thought were there, but I guess it kind of makes sense. Um, for one, we got Shanks, you know, young, young Shanks. I could tell it was Shanks. That was probably the most obvious person in the crowd. But there were some other people that kind of made me second guess. I don't know, like, I think this is Mihawk, but I'm not really sure. And this character you only see for a splash second. I think it's Buggy, but I don't know. It seems to linger the most while the crowd is all chaotic. Is this kid? Who is this kid? He's clearly somebody. I don't know. There's just so many freaking blondes and I am, I am at a loss. We don't really have too much time to ponder on who the hell these people are or the lackluster opening because it quickly moves over to the one actor slash character who's probably going to end up carrying the whole show to be honest. Like the actor for Luffy is going to need a chiropractor because he is, he's going to be carrying the show honestly. Like 10 out of 10 casting. He's do an amazing job with delivery right away he captures your attention go oh yeah i can i can see this guy is luffy so a applauding right there good job good job after his introduction we get introduced probably the second best casting is kobe i love kobe i love the chemistry in this version between luffy and kobe i think it's beautiful and I almost want to ship them, and I never shipped them before, so I guess that's saying something. The whole main point of the first episode was not just to set up the world, but also uh, Luffy meeting Nami and Zoro. So we have a lot of focus on that, and him trying to get the Grand Line map, as well as recruit these two, which both of them obviously were like, no, nah, I'm not going to join the crew, even though obviously they do. Our first introduction with Nami seems pretty solid, but I'm still not 100% on board with her. I think she looks fine and some of the acting is fine, but some parts of her character seems to just fall flat. I'm not really sure. Um, her chemistry with Luffy's actor is okay at best. In our first introduction with Zoro in the first episode, we see him um, being uh, recruited by the Baroque Society, but he's like, nah, man. And he just cuts that guy in half. It was a little gruesome, but not as much as it could have been. But yeah, this is number seven, and he looks nothing like how I imagined he'd look, but whatever, he's like a one-off character. In fact, he is such a wanted man, like, everybody wants a piece of him, and everybody wants to play with him, and not only does the Baroque Society try to recruit him in this episode and Luffy but also apparently this marine guy he's like uh join me or you will have your career as a bounty hunter just destroyed but Zoro's not looking to settle down um he doesn't need a relationship so he very politely declines by the time Zoro and Luffy actually meet up it's a very funny scene again the chemistry just clicks so well i don't know if there's anybody that this actor cannot click with except maybe nami a little bit but again i could just be hating the cgi for the gum gum fruit as well as the fight scenes and the choreography for those are honestly way more than i expected from netflix good job all in all the pacing for the first episode is really good they make an excellent use of the flashbacks tying back into present day. I really cannot complain. Young Luffy was adorable. That being said, 
it's still not a perfect episode. Like I said, I have issues with the Goldie Rogers opening speech, but also two characters in particular that I'm just kind of like iffy about. First up, Shanks. Um, his acting was really good. The, the costume look is really great hair, but I still think that he looks like a weird hybrid of Ryan Gosling and Robert Downey Jr. And I can't unsee it. And I don't think he looks like Shanks at all aside from that. I'm not really sure. But his acting's fine, so I guess it's forgivable. And lastly, it ends with us getting introduced to Buggy the Clown. I mentioned in a previous video that I think he looks spooky. And after watching that ending scene, I double down. The clown is spooky. He creeps me out. He's going to give me nightmares tonight. And Buggy shouldn't be giving me nightmares. Also, I'm not sure if this is a bad thing, but we got to see this guy naked. Uh, we got to see his butt, like his full-on big juicy butt and he's way too hot considering how he looks in the anime but I'm I'm not going to complain I mean look at this look at the screenshot all things considered it's still a very solid episode I think Netflix is on their way to redeeming themselves I would give it a solid 7 out of 10